Hey folks, this is Billy DKY, the true sicker that simplifies and demystifies. Today we're going to be talking about science's role in life. To understand science's role in life, you have to understand first the human mind. And let's break the human mind up into two different categories. Let's break it up into consciousness and then let's break it up into spirit or unconscious, however you want to say it. So let's take first, let's take a look at consciousness. How does consciousness typically work? It's usually slow. Methodical, boring, effortful, detail oriented straight line thinking, limited in ability and power. That's how the consciousness typically works. Now on the other hand, let's talk about intuition. How does intuition work? Intuition is fast, decisive, lively, exciting, effortless, spherical thinking, careless. So now let's go back and ask the question again. Which is science more like? Is science more like our spirit, our intuition, or is it more like our conscious thinking? And I think it's quite obvious that science is much more like our conscious thinking than it is our intuition by a long shot. So therefore, I say science is a conscious endeavor, not a spiritual one. Now we get in trouble with science when we make science our spiritual endeavor because it's obviously not a spiritual endeavor. So then the question is, how, what's science's role in life then, if it's not a spiritual one? Here's what science's role is. Just like your conscious, notice what I said with intuition, it's careless, it's fast, it's decisive, it's lively, it's effortless, it's spherical thinking. Consciousness is to keep all that stuff in check. The real power of your mind lies in your intuition. However, your consciousness is needed. Like I said, intuition is careless, so consciousness keeps that carelessness in check. It keeps the, the excitement, the liveliness, the you know, all that stuff in check. And likewise, science should be keeping spiritual people in check because sometimes spiritual people get out of hand. You know, they get they get a little whacked out with their spiritual path and thinking things are not, you know, they start getting lost in their own uh, intuition instead of having a little conscious you know, consciousness to bring them back to reality. So here's what I say. Therefore, science's role is just like consciousness over intuition. That is to keep intuition and intu uh, that is to keep intuitive and spiritual people in check. Spiritual people need to be kept in check by the facts, the reality. You know, there's a lot of things that come out of our intuition that's that's not correct. However, that is where the majority of the power of our human mind lies. Consciousness other role over intuition is to collect or again science's role over spiritual intuitive people is to collect and test the validity of those intuitive people's hunches. You know, like I said, we have a lot of hunches, but you really need to test them to know what's right. So there's a time though you know, I thought science was a problem. I was like, you know, science is a real problem. It creates a lot of problems. You know, and it gets arrogant, and I, and I come to realize science really isn't the problem. The problem, as the problem with science is arrogant people in science, is the problem. Science itself is not a problem. Just like consciousness is not a problem for intuition, those things, two things working together, can achieve greatness. And like I've always said, the root of all problems is ego and pleasure, not science or religion and stuff like that. It's, it's ego and pleasure is the real problems of life. So never mistake that. So science, is, science has a role in this life just like your consciousness has a role in this life. Your intuition. Ha spiritual people have a role in this life. Or intuitive people have a role in this life just like your intuition has a role. So the question is, when do, the, when do you have problems with that? Well, you have problems with that when they overstep their bounds. Like, if you ever met somebody that's overly conscious, it, it's hard to be around. If you ever met anybody that's overly intuitive, it's hard to be around them. So, let's give some examples of where religion or uh, spiritual people have overstepped their bounds. Separation of church and states. When, when religion overstepped its bounds, people eventually had to fight back and say, you know what, you're pushing your stuff too far on us, we're going to have to have separation of church and state. Spiritual people and scientists need to work together, not against each other. If science could humble themselves, they could make greater progress with less effort and resource. 
Now here's the problem I have with science. They do a lot of crazy stuff that doesn't even need to be tested. It's obvious to a lot of people who are very intuitive. Or if they do need to test it, they need to talk to intuitive people first to get an idea of where to start testing. You know, as a first guess. So you know what well, my intuitive hunch is, it's this. And then you'll go start there with your science instead of, you know, just going off on this crazy endeavor of just ridiculous stuff. We all have heard ridiculous science experiments like why was that even done? They spent millions of dollars on it. It's a waste of time. So anyway, that so that's a problem. And so what, notice what happened when notice. Let's take a look at Einstein. Look at what happened when Einstein brought intuition to science. He flipped the arrogant scientist on their heads, much like a master martial artist does to an arrogant opponent. You know, people get stiff. In, this, in science, people get stiff at times, and then somebody like Einstein has to come along with great intuition, and he flips the whole thing up on its head. And so my point is, if scientists would have been listening a little more to the intuitive people and not getting so lost in their arrogance that they know everything when they don't, then that probably wouldn't have been such a shock, some of the things that you know Einstein was saying. It wouldn't have flipped the world on its head. Likewise, spiritual people need to pay the proper respect to the scientists the scientists' facts because those facts bring sanity back to their spiritual past. Like I said before, earlier in the video, that spiritual people get whacked out a lot of times with their, you know, spiritual intuition or their revelation, spiritual revelations and stuff like that, that that don't need to believe just because they came through your mind. They need to be validated with evidence. It don't necessarily have to be scientific evidence, but it does need to be a methodical testing of those hunches. So again, my point is, science science and intuition, or intuitive people, need to work together, not fight against each other. And if they, could, and if they like I said, if they could do that, it would greatly eliminate you know, the resources spent in science, and would also eliminate some of the insanity that we get from some of these religious and science people. The struggle between science and intuition is very similar to the struggle between men and women. So typically a man's more conscious, a woman's more intuitive. That's just the way it is. It's what the house broken out. Man would not exist without women. Women would not exist without men. So they need each other. It's not it's not a you know there's, there's no big secret there. Likewise, scientists and spiritual people really do need each other. They can help each other a lot if they can really give the proper respect to one another. It's time science and spiritual people work together to create a greater knowledge with facts and spirits. Don't you get so tired of the science that's just so cold and dark, you know? And it's just like, you know, you need a little spirit put into that. And how many times have you went to a church or something that's just all spirit and no consciousness? I mean, you need some, rea like, you need some reality in your religion and spiritual past, too. So, I mean, all science, no spirit is not good. And all spirit, no science is no good. So... They need to work together. It's time for spirit and cognition to quit fighting with one another and learn to work together for the betterment of all. That's basically what it all boils down to. If you wouldn't mind, you please rate the video. And if you want to read the article I've written on this, which is a little different than the video, but it's the same kind of thought process, you can go to that. And the, the link will be up in the upper right-hand corner. You can click on it and go to that. And I think you might like it if you like this video. Later, folks.